The Cyclops and Ancient Temple Rituals We have all heard of Pythagoras, for better or for worse. But fortunately, we are not interested in mathematics today. Pythagoras was also a temple mystic. He once lived in a temple on Mount Carmel in Israel. And this temple was built by the same people who also built Solomon's temple. The writings of the ancient Greek poet Homer were also used by Pythagoras. And Homer is the one who wrote the Odyssey, which contains the story about the Cyclops. Homer was also called a prophet by some early Christians. We can then see if there is a link between the story of the Cyclops and the rituals of ancient Israel, in particular the Day of Atonement. Odysseus and his men had just won the Battle of Troy, they see a cave on an island and sail towards it. The island they first land on is near the island of the Cyclops. It is described as being Wooded. Solomon's temple had trees drawn all around. Overrun with goats. One Hebrew word for goat also means satyr. A satyr was a man-goat. Images of satyrs seem to have existed in Israel. This should not seem strange because the cherubim also were a mix of human and animal figures. It is described as having a spring of clear water coming out of a cave. The Holy of Holies was dark and so likened to a cave. And its golden floor likened to a crystal clear river of life. A thick mist. The High Priest on the Day of Atonement took incense into the Holy of Holies and its smoke would have been likened to a mist. The next day, Odysseus sails with 12 men to the island of the Cyclops. The mention of 12 men is linked to the garments of the High Priest.
The twelve stones on his breastplate bore the names of the twelve sons of Jacob. But the high priest only wore his white garments to go into the temple on the Day of Atonement. Yet the temple had twelve lampstands, a set of ten ending with a menorah and bronze serpent. The righteous are then likened to trees, lampstands, planted in the temple. Odysseus and his men saw lots of food inside the cave, cheese, sheep and milk. The cheese is the incense. The Hebrew words for milk and one type of incense are related. The sheep are the wool in the veil. The milk is the oil in the lamps. The Hebrew word for milk is related to a word meaning fat or grease. The huge cyclops came in and Odysseus and his men hid in fear. The high priest represented evil being cleansed, and so signified both good Odysseus and the evil Cyclops. The Cyclops is described as being giant-sized. The Bible says that our bodies symbolise the temple. Islamic tradition says that Adam was 30 metres, 90 feet tall. Yet this is also the length of Solomon's temple. The Cyclops is also described as having only one eye in his forehead. Yet the forehead is where the high priest had a golden plate saying, The Lord. This is why David hit the giant Goliath on the forehead. Both are stories about the high priest. Additionally, the book of Revelation describes a lamb with seven horns and seven eyes. It can be shown that the seven eyes represent the golden nameplate. The lampstand menorah. In Hebrew, a ray of light is described as being a horn of light, which explains the horn of the unicorn.
The Cyclops then killed two of Odysseus's men by eating them. This corresponds to the high priest sprinkling the blood of a bull before the Ark of the Covenant. The high priest then sprinkled goat's blood before the Ark of the Covenant and on the incense altar. This double sprinkling is symbolised by the Cyclops eating another two pairs of men on the next day. But where does the symbolism of eating come from? Elijah had a contest with the prophets of the god Baal to see which god would send down fire from heaven. Baal, the bad god. Divine fire came down and consumed the offering, the wood, the stones, the dirt and the water. Except that the Hebrew word consume is actually the usual word for eat, i.e. God ate the offering and everything. <coughs> God is called a consuming, eating fire, and so the Cyclops eating the men signified this play on words. But why did the Cyclops eat the men in pairs three times? The light of life had been taken from them, and this is related to the six side branches of the menorah lampstand, even though no lamps were extinguished. This means that one lamp was left, representing the eye of the Cyclops. Odysseus gave the Cyclops wine to make him drunk. Some traditions state that the high priest consumed the blood of the goat with sour wine or vinegar. Next, the high priest pronounced the divine name, the Lord. This corresponds to Odysseus telling the Cyclops his false name. What is your name? Nobody. This is a play on words in the ancient Greek. Odysseus, his name. Odys, the first part. Utis, nobody. The Cyclops fell asleep, being very drunk. Odysseus and his men drove a sharpened stake into his eye. <laughs> the 
The Cyclops, having the eye in his forehead blinded, represents the last lamp of the lampstand. Regarding the rituals, it represented the high priest removing the turban which covered his forehead. The Cyclops felt the top of the sheep to stop the men escaping, but the men were hidden underneath. <laughs> this signifies the scapegoat, the other goat which was not sacrificed but sent away the escaped goat. Before the temple rituals started, the high priest chose which goat would be sacrificed and which would be sent away. The high priest then tied a red band of wool around its horns. Afterwards, the high priest laid his hands on the head of the goat and confessed the sins of Israel, thereby identifying himself with it. Therefore the wall symbolised the sheep and the goat symbolised the escaping men, although the goat had already been sent away. They quickly rode away from the island. Odysseus jeered at the Cyclops. Na 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 na. Who then threw a mountain top at them. Oh! Odysseus then said his real name. My real name is Odysseus. And the Cyclops threw an even bigger rock at them. Shut up! The snow-covered mountaintop represented the white turban of the high priest. But what could represent the sea? The three parts of the temple represented heaven, the earth and the ocean. This is how one Christian understood the Bible regarding the universe. Heaven, earth and sky, ocean. It is significant that the entrance porch represented the waters, seas or oceans, because this has also been known as the vestibule. In order to see the symbol of the mountain being thrown into the sea, we will have to rewind a bit. The high priest put his white garments, including his turban, away in the temple. It is the turban being put away into the vestibule that was symbolised by the mountain top being thrown into the sea. This also explains the story about the Hindu god Krishna holding a mountain with his little finger for seven days.
This again is merely the high priest holding his turban. The seven days symbolise the seven lamps in the lampstand. And why David beheaded Goliath. This symbolises the high priest removing the turban from his head. Next, the Cyclops threw an even larger rock at them, but what could be larger than a mountain top? The High Priest had been symbolically born anew in the Temple, and so became a son of God. Yet the Hebrew words for sun and stone are similar, and so it is the High Priest himself who is the larger rock thrown into the sea. The High Priest came out of the Temple and was immersed in the bronze sea basin. Thank you for watching. Explanations, picture sources and acknowledgements can be found at rwtheology.org slash myths-legends.html or facebook.com slash richardworthingtontheology.